and welcome back to our creative videos. I'm Loretta Hayes from Hayes Sewing Machine Company here in Wilmington, Delaware. And today we're going to do a really quick project. Um, it is a panel. So, you know, we're familiar with quilting panels um, uh, and, Ooh, you know, pillow pretty. panels. This panel is done by Northcott and it is a really quick and beautiful um, it's a tote, tote bag. bag. Yeah, Look so you'll see on the panel that you have the bag, you have two handles, and then you have an internal pocket, and then you'll have the directions on how to do this. So this is, uh, you know, a really beautiful, just quick project. Uh, it would be a fabulous one if you're a beginner sewer uh, or you're teaching someone to, to sew. Uh, because you'll get that really uh, instant gratification, uh, but, you know, basic sewing skills. So today I'm going to do a little bit of work on my sewing machine, and I'm going to also do a little bit of work on my serger. So the directions have us start by taking the pocket, which is really cute. It says this bag belongs to, so you can take <laughs> a, a Sharpie or a permanent marker and write who the, the bag goes to. And they're going to ask us to uh, either zigzag the edge at the top or surge it. So I'm going to do a little bit of surging today. So we're going to swing around the front here. And when we're surging, we just want to trim just a hair off. So basically running the edge of my fabric along the edge of my uh, front bit. It will trim just a hair. You'll see I'm taking off about an eighth of an inch. And what's nice about the surgeon is it cleans up the edge. And you get this very nice looking edge going along like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the ironing board. Pam's going to be like following me everywhere today. <laughs> and we're going to flip under a half an inch on all of the edges. So we're going to come in and flip it on the top. And could you have surged all the way around if you wanted to? You certainly could. Absolutely. Um, I think they think because we're going to be stitching these edges down on the sides and the bottom that we didn't really need to finish it off. Um, I thought I would try not to reinvent the wheel. See, see, I understand <laughs> that. And just do what they asked me to do for the directions. All right, so that gets us our edges done. You can see it'll look very pretty going Cute. along there. What we do need to do is we need to get this top stitched down mm -hmm. uh, so that when we put our hand in it, that, it, that edge isn't flipping up. So we're going to head over to the sewing machine. Um, today I'm working with an edge stitching foot. And an edge stitching foot has a metal guide that runs down the center. And if you flip it over, you'll see that that guide does not go into the oval. So there are feet out there that are blind hem feet that look very much like that from the top. But you'll see that the guide goes all the way through the oval. And so we want something that's going to go short of the oval because I'm going to move my needle around in this oval and I don't want to hit that guide. If you have a Bernina, the foot that I'm using here is a 10C. Um, if you're doing, say, like a baby lock, um, l cleverly enough, they call it an edge stitching foot. <laughs> so what we want to do is we're going to place our fabric underneath the foot. Uh, just open up that side uh, that we pressed over. And I want to take and run the edge of my serging stitch right along the edge of my guide. And I want to move my needle position so it comes over here and top stitches about an eighth of an inch. So we're simply going to bounce the needle over. And honestly, it's a, you know, eyeball. We certainly don't have to measure it. We just want to be approximately an eighth of an inch from the edge. And so in doing so, I now have this metal guide that I can run right along the edge of the surging. It just keeps you really, really straight. So we'll come to the end. And so now we have the top of our pocket. Nice. Done. 
So the directions have us put the pocket on the inside of the bag. Could put it on the outside, but the bag is, the printing is absolutely lovely on this. So we're gonna come in and I'm gonna place it in the, the on the inside of one of my piece. And we're gonna fold it in half just to find kind of the middle of the bag. A little bit of heavy duty finger pressing goes in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing with my pocket. And I'm gonna line up approximately there. And of course you could drag out the ruler and you could check that out. And we'll get it lined up, looking nice. And then we're going to throw a couple of pins in there just to kind of hold it in position while we're stitching it. So we'll get the corners and we'll get the side. And then once again, we're going to line up the edge of the fabric along the edge of the guide. Now, because I'm on the left hand side of the guide this time, I'm now going to move my needle over to the left hand side. Okay, look. so we're going to go ahead and start stitching. Um, I always like on my pocket to do a little bit of a back tack. Um, just so that it strengthens it. I love making projects, but I really don't want to mend them. So by doing a little bit of a back tack, we're going to then come to the corner, let our needle sink in. If your machine has uh, such a thing as needle stop down, this would be a fabulous place to use that because then as we stop, it kind of holds our place. We don't get a little hiccup in our stitching. We'll pivot our corner. And then when we get back to the top, we'll sew right to the edge, hit our reverse button, do a little back tack, and then we can cut our thread. And so now we have a nice pocket inside of our bag. Wonderful. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come and we're going to flip the bag over so that we have the pretty side facing up. And you'll notice this bag uh, is the, the both sides of the bag are actually put together. So there's no need to sew a bottom. And what they've done, which is really cool, is they've given us a fold line right at the bottom. Nice. Okay, so, so you when can't you mess fold, it up. No. And, you know, you're lining up the top and the bottom, but you should look at it and you're like, oh, yeah, the fold line's there. Yeah, my edges are lined up here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this back over to the serger and serge this. Um, however... When we come back to the sewing machine, I'll show you what you can do if you are doing a regular sewing machine. You may not have a serger at home. So we're going to line up our edges. And we're going to serge all the way down. flip it over and we'll do the same on the other side. Now what's interesting about a serger is we use the serger to finish off the edge on the pocket and we didn't change anything and we're able to put two pieces of fabric together and it'll seam it. So sergers are like the microwave of sewing room. It's going to do a whole lot of jobs um, all at one time. So it sews my seam, 
finishes off the edge and trims off the excess. All right, so Loretta, what if I don't have a serger? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, she's talking in third yeah, person. Yeah, I know. I'm now doing third person, right? <laughs> so if you don't have a serger, then all you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to sew your seam, so about a quarter of an inch in. So you'll go ahead and you'll sew your seam. And then what you'll do is you'll come back and you'll finish off those edges because we do really want those edges to be finished. So one of the stitches that I love to do uh, when I'm finishing off an edge is what they call a three-step zigzag. So a three-step zigzag does little stitches as it goes across, where a zigzag jumps back and forth left to right. And so you can run that along the edge and you can be guaranteed that this is not going to fray. So you can see with the three-step zigzag, that'll get caught in. And because it's doing the three-step, you'll see it lays really flat. Sometimes when we just zigzag the edge, it wants to kind of curl the edge under. And here's the nice thing. If your machine has five stitches on it, you'll have this stitch. So this is a stitch that's really available to, to pretty much everybody. All right. Now, next thing that we want to do is we want to prep our handle. So this is what the handle is going to look like finished. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our handle, we're going to hold it and fold it in half lengthwise. And then once we have a crease, we're going to fold those edges into the crease. So if you want to come over with to the ironing board with me. So right now we're going wrong sides together. And then we're going to open it up. And where I can see the crease, I'm now going to come in and I'm going to line up those raw edges right with that and fold that crease in and press that. What's really nice about this technique is you're not making a tube and having to flip those handles out and it lays so much flatter than flipping a tube. All right, so there's the first side. So let's flip it over and do exactly the same thing on the second side. <laughs> I was just thinking poetry in motion. There All right, there we go. So now what we're going to have is we're going to have a handle that the raw edges are inside, and it becomes four layers of fabric because we have the two layers here and the two layers on the underside. And so it gives you a nice strong handle, something that you're not going to have to replace in a hurry. All right, so let's head back to the sewing machine and prep this one. So we're going to go back to a straight stitch and once again, just like working with the pocket, I'm going to place the fabric on the left hand side of the guide. So we're going to move the needle to the left hand side. And so we'll start stitching it and what's nice is you get those two edges. They just push right up against the guide. And it makes it look really professional and it's super, super easy. I love my edge stitching foot. I use it for all kinds of things. So 
so we have our handle. We're going to take it back to the ironing board and give it a quick press. And why don't you come back with me, Pam, because I'll do the hem at the same time. Sorry. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Banging you around a little bit. All right. So handle is done. And now what we need to do is we need to look at our tote bag. And what you'll find is on the inside of the tote bag, there are two little white marks. Mm -hmm. Okay. When, before we searched it, they actually said fold on it. So it's about a three quarter inch hem. So we can fold that and we're going to press that in. And flip her over. Let's get rid of that little serger tail. Now, because I've got the marks on both edges of the, the bag, I find it fairly easy to just go ahead and press it. But if this is new to you, super simple things that you can get, you can get a, a seam gauge and you can set that at three quarters of an inch. And then as you're pressing, you can keep lined up really easily. All right, so we're gonna press it once. Once you get it done the first time, you're then gonna take it and you're gonna press it a second time. And of course the second time is even easier because you have that raw edge as your guide to fold over. And we're gonna press it all the way around. So once we have that done, then we're going to take it and we're going to look at the handles. We're going to put one handle on one side of the bag and one handle on the other side of the bag. So you should <laughs> never have a handle that is attached one on one side and one on the other. I, I, I did, did that once. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what's wrong with this bag? <laughs> oh, never mind. All right, so what we want to do is we want to kind of get this centered. So if we fold the bag and find our center, we'll throw a little pin in there just to give us a mark. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put our handles. So we're going to lay the handle down. Oh, they have and put tuck it, it Yes, they have it tuck it underneath. Oh, so we'll clever. go under there. Don't twist it. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go under there. Now, this is where your uh, marking tool is really nice. So right now, I am three and a half inches on this edge. So I want to be three and a half inches on this. Oh, look at that. That'll never happen again. And so we'll come in and we'll just throw a and pin. And that three and a half inches, is that mentioned in the directions? It is not. Okay. They just pl say place your handles. So you like three and a half inches? Yeah, three and a half inches is just a nice spacing. It gives you a handle. It basically divides the bag into roughly thirds. Got it. All right, so when you do the first side, you need to measure it. When you do the second side, it's super, super easy because we can just look at the first side. So we can come in, we can line up. So you put it in and then just check. Mm-hmm. And we'll flip it around and we'll look on the other side here. So we have it like that. And then 
if you want to do a quick double check, we've still got our pin there, so we can flip that in. So I'm actually a little, on, a little out on that one. So we'll shift that just a little bit. So we're looking to be pretty good. Awesome. All right, so now we've got our handles done. What's going to happen with our handles is we're going to flip the handles upward and they're going to get caught in as cool. we do the hem. So when I go to do that, I would like to not stitch over my pin. So I'm going to take my pin, pull it out from the back where it's going to be hiding. And I'm just going to pin that up like that and then we'll flip that over and do the same thing on the other side. What's nice about this cotton fabric is once you've pressed it, it really does want to just stay where, where it is. Um, however, if you were working with it where you wanted to have a little extra security, this would be a great place to put a couple of clips and that'll kind of hold going around. All right, so let's go ahead. I'll go, oh, and I wanted to check, I'll do one thing before we do. Um, when you're looking at your handles, grab a hold of your handle at the, the inside edge and run your fingers all the way down the handle. Don't let go of the inside edge and go all the way down and you should end up on the inside edge again. It's a really nice way of just checking your handles because nothing is worse than having to take a handle back off because we've got it twisted. Awesome. All right, all right. so we are now ready to stitch. And I'm going to stitch on um, starting on the side seam so it kind of hides it. And so once again, we're swapping sides. So I'm going to place the fabric. This time it's going to be on the right hand side of the guide. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to move my needle position over to the right hand side. So basically you're always stitching on that same side of the guide as you have your fabric. And so we'll stitch along when we get close to our handle. We'll kind of go up, get it caught, pull out our pin. Go to the next handle. Just make sure your handle isn't getting caught <laughs> underneath. Not that we would have ever no, done no, that. No, no. We've heard that that can happen. <laughs> <laughs> Never happened to us. All right, and off we go. So we're now halfway done. And we'll go ahead and flip it around. Get close to that handle, pull that pin out. back tack when we get to the end and we've got the top done. Now technically we have a tote bag right now. However, we've got a tote bag that's kind of two-dimensional and oftentimes if you're doing uh, say books or that kind of thing it's kind of nice to have a little bit of three dimension and anytime you're doing a tote bag and you want to get dimension all you have to do is sew the corner differently. So we've got our corner right now where it's just kind of the bottom of the fold and there's my serging stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the bag. We're going to line up the fold 
from the bottom of the bag and my stitch. And the pattern, the, the panel directions, have you measure down two inches. So we'll put our little slider at two and we'll measure down and we'll get to two and we'll throw a So the few slider and the red slider is at the point. Yes, exactly. Got it. At right at two and then I'm just pinning at the bottom of the ruler. So we'll go ahead, I'm going to put three pins in here, one that holds the seam and then two that are on the other side of those pins. Okay, so there's our first one. Let's go ahead and flip it over and do the same thing on our second one. So pull that corner all the way out, line it up on the fold, and then once again, we're going to measure down two inches because you really do want them to be the same. <laughs> fine, no four inch fine. on one side, inch you and a half on the other. All, <laughs> None at all. All right, so we've got that going on like there. All right, so now we're just going to sew across where we have the pins. So we'll hop on there. I'm going to move my needle position just right back to center. I'll use the guide as my kind of guide for center. Pull those pins out. And I would do a little back tack at the beginning and the end of the seam just so that you don't end up with a little ventilation hole at the bottom of the back. And so we're going to come in and go straight across. Do a little back tack again. And there's our first corner. And then flip it over and do the same. Once you have this done, you have a big decision in your life. Are you going to just leave the little corner flipping in there, or are we going to cut the corner off? So if we're going to cut the corner off, I could have actually done this on the serger, but oftentimes with the serger, like you're cutting, it's a, it's a committed thing, right? <laughs> so this way I can do the seam, and I can trim that off when I'm happy with it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that three-step zigzag and just finish off that edge. That way it's not going to fray. You can wash it. It's not a yeah, problem. Yeah, it's not going to get ratty inside. So if we do it on one side, we're going to do it on the other. And I do kind of like that clean look without having that triangle flipping in the inside. Crumbs can get caught. Oh, really? <laughs> I've heard rumors. I've heard rumors. All right. So we now have a completed tote bag. We'll flip those ends on out here. Get our corner out there. And there... That is, is so nice. Bag. And it's a pretty, pretty That is panel. a gorgeous panel, yes. Going along for that. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it's certainly a fun and easy project to do. Uh, something that you want to whip it out quickly, or if you're a beginner, it's a really achievable project. So we'll see you next time.